So I'm in Miami. This doesn't suck, trust me. The weather is absolutely beautiful and they're having the launch of this vehicle here because it is a busy uh, metropolitan area and the smart car really is not designed for long journeys or taking a lot of people. It only takes two people. It really is designed for driving in an urban area like this, be it Miami, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal. So you're gonna buy a car that you're gonna commute short distances with. So then you add in electrification. This is the smart for two electric drive and it really does make a wonderful experience in the city. So the battery charge is quicker. You can now charge this car from zero to 80% full in two and a half hours if you have a 240 volt outlet, which is what most people should invest in in their garage or at their home. This vehicle is not supported for one of those kind of superchargers, a real quick charge. They don't have that capability for the North American market, but maybe one day they will. So Smart isn't trying to be anything that it isn't. It doesn't make any apologies for what they're trying to do here. An urban car now with the capacity to go about 160 kilometers, which is just about perfect for most people. So the Smart is bigger than the previous generation. It's not longer, but it is wider. That offers more space on the inside. But the inside, there are a few quirks. All right, let's start with what's good about this new Smart for Two. It's wider, and you certainly notice that right away. And it used to have a very quirky dashboard. It's now slightly quirky, but it looks more like a conventional car. Now, where's the battery hidden? Right underneath the front seats. Running side to side underneath the car is where the battery pack is placed. And then behind the back seats, driving the rear wheels is where the electric motor is. So it's a rear wheel drive car, and it gives you great handling and dynamics. So what's different with the electric version is basically the instrumentation. You get a different readout in the center of the speedometer. You get different readouts for the electric system, how efficiently you're driving. And also the cluster up on the dash shows you how much power is left in a percentage. So right now I'm at 60% and it also tells you whether you're using power or charging the battery while braking. Now, there are some quirky things about this car, and the most annoying to me, and I've been driving this all day long, is you drive along like this, and you know, it's an automatic car, so you wanna put your, your knee back and you rest it against the door, is exactly where the mirror button is. So, you don't notice that you've actually leaned your knee against it until you wanna look at your mirror, and it's shooting down at the door. So, where that's placed is kind of boggling to me. I do like the fabric that's on the top of the dash. It gives it some texture. It's a car they try to save costs, obviously, because electric cars are expensive to make, and I appreciate that they've added that detail in there. But this button here is a bit baffling. Now, the previous Smart Electric Drive was my favorite of the Smart for Two in the first generation because the gasoline, or initially the diesel, had a very jerky sequential gearbox. So having no transmission made it much, much smoother. And this is the same because it's an electric drive, it's direct drive, and you have that instant torque which makes it so enjoyable. Now, this isn't a very quick car. It goes to 100 kilometers an hour in 11.6 seconds, but it's that first sort of, uh, you know, 100 meters out of the pocket that definitely feels rewarding, gives you that surge of torque, and it can get you across an intersection or a traffic light very quickly. So let's just talk about what this is. This is an urban city runabout vehicle. This is not designed for going on long trips. It's not designed for doing a big, big commute. It's basically an urban little runabout. And when you add the electric part of it, it definitely makes it a very rewarding vehicle. So if you're just doing, you know, 20, 30 kilometers a day in and around the city, why wouldn't you consider a small car? And if you're going to consider a small car, maybe the electric option is the way to go. So you have about 160 kilometers of range. They haven't said officially what the number is, but it's going to be more than the 140 kilometers that was available in the previous edition in Canadian weather with the cold, with the heat on, the seat warmers and all that. The range definitely does drop down. So that's something you have to consider, but once again, this is a city car. You're not going long, long distances. You're using it to run about in an urban area. Now the top speed is 130 kilometers an hour, which is more than enough to keep up with city traffic and short trips on the highway but it's the maneuverability of this car that is second to none. You can turn this car around in a very, very small area, so maneuvering is absolutely top notch. Now, once somebody has bought an electric car, often that's all they wanna drive, and when you drive a car like this, you can absolutely see why. I'm driving basically at highway speeds. It's very quiet in here, and you have that instant surge of torque that I mentioned. 
Now this Smart for Two, because it's wider, has a much more planted feel on the road. And you definitely notice that at highway speeds. In fact, when you get up to about 100 kilometers an hour, the car really settles down. So I'm sure somebody would look at this Smart for Two electric drive, not as a primary car, but as a great second car. But once you have that gateway into the electric driving experience, I would probably think you might be interested in a bigger vehicle that might be electric as well. Now, there's no price yet for this Smart for Two electric drive. It is coming in the spring of 2017, so pricing will come closer to that date. Typically, when a car company comes out with a new version, they don't adjust the price that much. So look at uh, the previous uh, version of the Smart Electric as sort of a guideline. There are incentives in place, really quite generous ones, especially in Ontario. Quebec and British Columbia has $5,000, but you can multiply that by getting a, a trade-in for an older gas guzzling or inefficient vehicle. So it knocks down the price quite quickly. This is a perfect second vehicle if you already have the SUV for the family as a runabout or a single person that lives in the city. It's a lot of fun to drive. It's the best smart if you ask me and it's going to be interesting to see how they price it coming soon.